Today, I'm going to show you how to make a Minecraft iron farm in the style of an Imperial at vehicle from Star Wars. So let's get straight into it. A few weeks ago, I showed you 21 Minecraft iron farm designs that you could design for your world and asked you if you'd like a tutorial on any of them. Loads of you came back and said you'd really like a tutorial on the at at vehicle from Star Wars, except we're going to make this one even better. And what's more, I'm going to offer this to you as a Minecraft world download. This world download is for Java edition. I'm sorry, Bedrockers, but this iron farm does not work in Bedrock. The mechanics are just so different. With this Minecraft iron farm world download, you get this incredible Minecraft seed, which includes not one, not two, but three ocean monuments surrounding this little mushroom island, a large jungle, complete with a jungle pyramid, amazing biome diversity, all around the spawn area where your iron farm is waiting. First thing you gotta do is find a spot to build it. I think these plains on the edge of the savannah are perfect. This platform is the highest point for 24 blocks in any direction, so we can make sure our golems only spawn inside our farm. This is what you're gonna to need to be able to build this farm the same way that I have. Now, some of these are approximate. For example, I've got four stacks of smooth stone. It's not bang on four stacks, little more, little less, about a stack of chiseled stone bricks. You're also gonna need perhaps some other blocks that you wanna mix in there as a result of making it the way you wanna make it. You do definitely want a couple of droppers. You do definitely want some decoration blocks and you absolutely do want these powered rails and normal rails to get your zombie in. Let's crack on with it. For this farm, you're going to need an area approximately 10 blocks by 18 blocks, but it's a good idea maybe to give yourself a little bit of extra space. First, we are going to make the feet. So make yourself a row of one, two, three, and four blocks, and then on either side, put two extra blocks so you've got that shape. Then move one, two, three to one side, and then move one forwards. And you're going to do exactly the same shape, but offset by one block. You can see it's ever so slightly off like that. I am using smooth stone blocks for this, but you could use andesite or normal stone. They both work well. Come onto one of your feet and come out this side and go one, two, three, four. And on the fifth block, place another foot exactly the same shape like this. And then on the other side, one, two, three, and build another foot. So as that is also offset ever so slightly. You should have four collections of eight blocks just like this. Then, using a slab made of a different stone variant, I'm just using stone, come all the way around the outside to create a border around each and every one of the feet that looks like that. We're then gonna create the basic shape of each leg. We're gonna place two more of the blocks that you've made the main part of the feet on, and then we're gonna get some andesite wall now, quite light andesite for this part, and we're gonna come up three on each side of those blocks, and on the top one, we're gonna place another two blocks, so we've got a gap in the middle there. We're then gonna place two more across the top of that. We're gonna get some stone stairs, just to give a bit of differentiation like that. And then some chiseled stone bricks. Now this looks like it's got some kind of cogs or whirrings on it. So that's why we're using chiseled stone. It's like it's got some kind of pivot. On top of those, we're gonna place two more blocks like that. We're gonna get more stone stairs there, more stone stairs there. We're then gonna get two more of our stone blocks like that. And then again, we need more pivoty types of bit. And we're gonna go one, two, three, four. And I'm gonna place those on that side like that. And those on that side like that. So it's one big turny cog. That is the knee and that is the hip. And you wanna put one of those on all four of the feet. And your four legs should then look like that. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna to come to the middle of these turny cog parts and you're gonna place four on the outsides of those so that's the outside there and on this side four on the outside there as well we are going to put some more detail on these in a minute but we did need the basic structure so we could build up the body we now need to create the area that connects these hips to the underside of the body so we're going to put a step there it is the right way round step we're then going to go one two and three blocks we're then going to get another step that's upside down right there we're going to come to this side repeat the process step there we're gonna get a block, one, two, three blocks, and then another upside down step right there. We're then gonna get a slab, and opposite this part that's just jumping out there, put a slab on that side and a slab on that side. We're then gonna get a step that goes that direction and that direction, and in here, we're gonna stick another two blocks. Then underneath, well, we've got these three blocks here. We're gonna offset, go one, two, and three. Same on the other side, one, 
two and three like that we're then going to get a slab that goes under there and under there and then we're going to get steps again that go upside down there and there and also there and there so you should have a shape that looks like that from the inside and if you come on the outside it should look like that and then just repeat that on the inside of the other two legs we're then going to create the base of the body and this bit's easy it is literally a flat platform come to one of the legs doesn't matter which one of the legs you come and come to the forward facing one put a block on top of it and come out one two and three you are then going to put another 11 blocks going backwards one two three four five six seven eight nine ten and eleven you can see we've got a 15 block run there and we're then going to make just a platform that goes all the way across the entirety of the top of the legs over those hips so as it is a rectangle so you should have a 15 by 7 platform right there now come to the back the back is the part that isn't jutting out quite so far just nick out those two corners like that and then come to the front and nick out one, two, three, four, and five on one side, come around the other side, one, two, three, four, and five. So you should end up with a shape that looks like that. With your five by five platform here being your villager zombie pod, and that is how you generate the golems. Come to the front part of your five by five there. The front is the part that pokes right out over your legs and place three beds, point three blocks back, one, two, three, and then place your three beds in like that. You should have a row of blocks going all the way around those beds and the heads of the beds where the pillows are should be facing forwards. Then take out that block and place in a slab. It needs to be on the bottom section so you've got an indent. You are then going to run a wall from there, miss that block, come all the way around like that and then across the back. Then build that up another two levels. And it should look like that. And then at the very front, take out that corner, take out that corner and replace it with a slab just like that. Come inside your box and on the back wall right here, knock that out and put in a lit block. That could be a jack-o'-lantern. I'm using glowstone. It could be shroom light. Could even be a sea lantern if you've got them. Then place stone there and a stone there and a stone there. We're then gonna grab steps there with the stone there and we're going to put some upside down steps right there we're also going to put a tempero block there i'm using wool because that would be really easy to snip out later and i'm going to get a glass block i'm going to place a glass block right there i'm going to place a glass block right there and i'm going to place a glass block right there that just kind of lets the villagers look out i feel really bad about making it dark and wet and horrible for them so i just put in a couple of windows we can then place a block above that glass and we need to make this look ever so slightly less blocky now. It is a big old cube. So let's take out that block and that block, take out those three blocks, replace those with steps, take out that, 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 and that, replace those two blocks there and there, replace that with steps there, and then we're gonna replace that block there with another slab, this block there on this side with another slab, that block with a stair, that block with a stair, and then coming around on this side, that block with a stair. We're gonna leave that there for now, not replace it with a step, and I'll show you why in just a moment. We now need to make the golem spawning chamber, and this is the head of the ATAT. -AT. So first off, we've got to connect it to the rest of the farm. So we'll have two blocks like that, upside down step, normal step, and then this side, upside down step, normal step, and that'll make like a neck area. Then we're gonna put a temporary block there and then a solid block. Take out the temporary block and put an upside down step facing that way. That is now our connection. Then we're gonna come out with this what? One, two, three, four, and then a temporary block on the edge. And then we're gonna place another row on that side and another row on that side. We can then put some upside down stone steps there, 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 and there. Place two more temporary blocks there to place stone steps there come around the outside don't put anything in that corner just there that's not in the way come around this way like that and then place normal way around steps there and there not the very end but there and there this is going to be our spawning platform we then to want to make a wall that is five high one two three sorry three high not five high and then do the same on the sides going over those steps and this side as well three high all the way along and then here we're going to go one 
and too high and then finally we're going to put red stained glass in there just to make it look a little bit authentic to the AT-80. We're going to put a lot more detail onto it but we need to get the structure there first. We then need to get a sign and place a sign there, there and there and then more signs coming across there, shift click there and shift click there. Now we're going to put lava in this in a moment but we're not going to do it just yet because I don't want anything going on with that wall and the fire tick. We're also going to put some water in it in a second as well. But before we do the next bit we'll come on to the back section and just by this light block here count one two take out that third one and both on either side and then dig out a three by three. Most of these blocks are going to go back this is not permanent and then underneath one of the front corners it doesn't matter which one but I'm going to go for the one that has got the legs slightly forward place at the top of the steps here a slab like that and then build yourself a three by three platform like this. On this corner here, place a dropper, it has to be a dropper, not a dispenser, facing upwards. And then another one, a dropper, not a dispenser, facing upwards on top of that. You will need to shift click to make that work. You then need to put a comparator facing out the side, make it in subtract mode by right clicking on it once, put that into a block, doesn't matter what the block is as long as it is conductive. Take a repeater going that way, a repeater going that way, and then redstone dust making a T shape like that. We are then going to get ourselves a chest and that chest is going to go there and then shift click there and then one on top and then shift click there. So we've got four chests, two double chests. We can then replace that, 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 that and that. That is our storage system. And this is going to be ready and waiting for us in this base type storage area in the back of the AT-AT -AT vehicle. We're now going to structure up the back of this ATAT. -AT. This block here is going to be the taller midsection. That's going to be one, two, three, four, and five blocks. You can see we've got two blocks above this current pod because that is going to lift up ever so slightly. That's going to count in one, two, three. And on this fourth one, we're going to come up the same number of blocks. So that's going to be like a five by five square right there. And then this is just going to be four blocks high because it needs to come down. And this is going to be three blocks high because that needs to come down and then on this end that remains three that remains three as do those and those we're going to leave that gap because that's going to be a door we're then going to put some upside down stairs just there so as we've got somewhere to get in and out of that door and then we're going to match it on this side with three blocks there four blocks there and then a five by five here so the basic shape is coming there. I'm just going to lay out two more blocks on the top of this just to continue that curve because the back of an at, -AT is definitely a nice curve like that. And then inside here, just for the time being, we're going to replace some of these bits fairly shortly. I'm just going to put carpet all over the floor so it is spawn proofed. We're not going to get the golem spawning just yet and some of these are going to have other blocks placed on top of them. But that's just to make sure that I don't forget. And I'm also going to go around and spawn proof things like the top of the cogs on the thighs, outside this back door, etc. We only want the golems spawning inside that golem killing chamber. I'm also going to put a stone pressure plate right there, an iron door in there and a button on that side and also that side. We now need to come underneath and run a hopper line there and then sideways and then come all the way along the center of this until we get to the underneath of that temporary wall. And then inside take out all of those walls, shift click into that hopper, shift click into that hopper and shift click into that hopper. We can then get our water and we're going to waterlog that step and that step. That will be pushing our golems into our kill chamber and they will be killed as a result of that lava blade which will be glowing through that red glass. We now need to get the roofs onto these chambers, but we have to be very careful with the golem chamber. If we put any solid blocks over the top, that could cause the golems to stop spawning. So this is going to be relatively open. So the first thing I'm going to do is put bottom slabs across this area here. That's going to allow the villagers to get in and out of their beds really, really easily. And it also is an unspawnable block. And we like unspawnable blocks in this farm. We're then going to also create the top of this by getting some stairs on this section. One, two, three, four and five. And then we can again create some stone slabs just there. That is now a bottom slab and as a result we can have non-spawnable roof. We're going to add again more details onto this soon and then on here we're going to get another set of steps 
We're gonna run those all the way along. These are not spawnable, so that is a real positive. And then here, we're gonna put those bottom side slabs again. This is gonna be more stairs coming down all the way along. And then again here, we're gonna put some bottom side slabs on. We do have spawnable blocks here that we're gonna take care of in a moment. But right now, that is a roof across that entire section. We're now gonna create the impression of an enclosed space on top of this little section here. So we're gonna put those two steps like that. We're gonna bring this around there, there, and there. We then want to make this slightly closed off by bringing steps that way. That means that this head area now looks ever so slightly more rounded and we much prefer that. We're then gonna get slabs across the top of here. Remove that one just to enclose off that lava, but we're gonna keep this part open. That will increase the spawn rate of our golems and we'll get much more iron out of it. We can then look at all of these spawnable blocks here and put some carpet on top of them. That's the best way and it also gives a little bit more difference in terms of texturing on top of this area too, which I quite like. We can then place more carpet on the sides here and here and on top here and here. There shouldn't be a problem with fire tick coming onto that. However, if you find that those carpets do burn up, what you can do is you can just place a slab on it like that, or maybe even an iron trap door, which would look like that. We've got two things left to do. We've got to get the villagers and the zombie inside the farm to make it work, but we've also got to detail it up so it looks a little bit more impressive. Right now, still very, very blocky. First up, we're gonna do all of those details now on a time lapse, and then I'm gonna show you how to get the villager and the zombies in. So sit back, relax, enjoy the music. Let's crack on with a little bit of detailing. structure of the iron farm is finished now, including a neat little storage base inside the back end. But it is not going to work without villagers and a zombie, so let me show you how to do that. Now the easiest way to get the villagers in is to let them do it themselves. So knock out these three holes in the wall and then build a staircase that goes all the way down to ground level. Then bring your villagers close by boat and wait until night time. Once it's night time, the villagers are gonna to want to go to bed and they're gonna track those beds up there, break the boat, and they're gonna walk straight up there all on their own. You don't have to worry about it. They're gonna do it themselves. And before you know it, you are gonna have all your villagers inside your little pod here with a bed each. And that's exactly what you want. You also need them to have slept for a couple of seconds for this farm to work and block up that hole again. Now, slightly harder is getting your zombie inside. To capture your zombie, make yourself a two deep trench. You are gonna climb over it whilst the zombie also climbs over it. You can jump over that gap, the zombie can't, it'll fall down and he'll be trapped in that section with that minecart and those powered rails. Because you see, a zombie can't stand on the powered rails on its own. 
it has to be dropped onto them. So we need to try and find a single zombie and lure it in. We really only want the one because two zombies can be a little bit problematic. But if we get close enough, the zombie can see us much further away than any other mob. That zombie has already seen us. We can then track back and hopefully someone else hasn't spawned just over here. You should keep following us and eventually fall into our trap. Here he comes. Our zombie is coming close. Now he thinks he can walk over these trap doors, but he can't and he's gonna fall into our trap. Now he might give us a little knock, but that doesn't matter. Before we pop him in, we're gonna name tag him. What a lovely name that fella's got there. We quite like that name. And I'm just gonna flick that switch that is going to shove him all the way up our powered rail and into our chamber. And you can see him inside there giving those villagers a bit of a scare and we've already got an iron golem spawned inside there giving us lovely iron. Those villagers in there will see that zombie except when they're tucked up right in that corner like that villager there is. They will sleep and then they'll stop sleeping and as a result that zombie will be able to keep scaring them and we won't get any fatigue. You need to just pinch out that temporary block there so the guys right in the end bed when they're asleep can be seeing him and then remove these rails and replace that block and make sure you remove the rail the block not the rail if you remove the rail that creates this spawnable block and that is not what you want so get yourself all the way down so there are no spawnable blocks for this golem to spawn on except inside our farm Remember to go to avamance.com for the world download. It will be there waiting for you. Click on free downloads and there will be a specific link that will take you to exactly this world. Remember, just for Java players. You should come out at exactly this spot, but if you don't, the coordinates are minus 352-73179. That is 352-73179. I hope you've enjoyed the video and I look forward to seeing you in the next one. You take it easy now. Bye.